Welcome to Drive. It's Anna Foster and Peter Allen with you for the next hour. Our main story tonight remains the divisions at Westminster over the Leveson recommendations for press regulation. Uh, victims of press intrusion have now launched a campaign to try to persuade Parliament to implement the proposals in full. Uh, ministers are talking about a, a draft bill being ready within a fortnight. David Cameron said he has serious concerns about Lord Justice Leveson's call for a new system to be underpinned by law, warning that it could curb freedom of the press. But the Labour leader Ed Miliband has joined the Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg in supporting a new press law. And campaigners are on that side too. They say they've got about 16,000 signatures to a petition launched at lunchtime by two witnesses to the inquiry, Christopher Jeffries, who was wrongly linked to a murder in Bristol, and Jeremy McCann father of missing Madeline. He's shown himself to be too much the friend of certain MPs in his own party and indeed certain press barons and press editors. Well, I think this is an opportunity not just for Mr Cameron. He isn't the only person that's voting. This is an opportunity for our politicians to redeem themselves a bit. Clearly the public wants it. There's been a public inquiry, a judicial review, and I think the recommendations should be implemented. Martin Campbell is a former chief advisor to Ofcom, current chair of the Broadcast Journalism Training Council. Martin, good evening. Good evening, Peter. There was one point I was trying to make yesterday, um, having had a quick look at the report. There was only a tiny bit about it, actually, about the internet. And in a way, you know, the press is a declining influence, and it's actually the internet that we should be all looking at now, isn't it? And Twitter, etc. I, c- I couldn't agree more. I, I, I congratulate you on having a quick look through... <laughs> through that document. Oh, somebody told me there were a couple of hundred words and it was only, you know, to be fair to him, nobody said to him, look at the internet. But I mean, without no, it, no, but, controlling that, the way people libel each other is pretty difficult, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that you've, you've put your finger on the most important bit of this. And what Leveson did say in his report was that he did describe the internet as being the elephant in the room. Because newspaper regulation is now inextricably linked with the broadcast, with video, with internet, with blogs, social network sites. I mean, Newsnight and This Morning showed that. The phone hacking, it's all, it's all part of the yeah. digital era. So the whole area needs to be looked at. So in a way, Le- Levison is, is piecemeal because, you know, sooner or later, they have got to be brought together. Um, it's a bit, I think it's a bit of a waste of time looking at newspapers in isolation now because this is the digital era. You know, so something like the Daily Mirror is not the sort of political mallet that it was. It's a different beast from those days. But, but politicians don't seem to understand that. They don't understand the new roles of, right. the, um, of the different platforms. And then we get to the political debate, which is all about whether or not you use the law or you have to underpin all this with the law. Is that a legitimate debate? I mean, you know, do you understand exactly what sort of law you would need? Does anyone really understand exactly what sort of law is required? No. <laughs> I had that feeling. I kept <laughs> feeling, I felt I'm feeling vaguely dim yesterday because I, I couldn't really pin down exactly what the law would say. No, fear not. I mean, no, if, if, it was, if it was a question of changing Ofcom's remit to oversee this new body, well, whatever it enough, is, wouldn't it? You could do then that. that. That would be simple enough. You would just need to, to change a line in the Communications Act and, and off you go. I can't get my head round, you know, a, a draft bill by a government that doesn't actually want it. But, I mean, th- there are a couple of truisms here, Peter, with, with regulation. One is that self-regulation isn't regulation. Uh, However you try and dress it up, it isn't. Light touch regulation isn't really regulation. So you have to look at exactly what you want to do. And I'm not sure that that people are, are quite clear on this because... You have to look at the sort of freedom we're protecting. Now, young journalists, if you take something like contempt of court, young journalists, they know the rules of contempt. They know where the barriers are. If they go through something like a BJTC course, and I'm sure you went through one as well, you know exactly where those contempt barriers are. And by and large, regulated broadcasters such as yourself, local papers, regional papers, they will play by the rules. It's the editors of big papers and media moguls. They don't because they're powerful. And in the past, the um, the CPS, the police, politicians have, have mainly stood by and let them do it. They do things that regional newspapers and broadcasters wouldn't do. So if we're not careful, we're sort of protecting the right to abuse free speech at a certain level rather than actually pr- protect free speech. Well, uh, is, it, is uh, your as feeling if laws were really implemented and if we really, the content law, for instance, is routinely in the national papers simply ignored, I mean, if, we, if it were really uh, observed, then perhaps half the problem would go away. Yes, 
Yeah, yeah. And if, if, if that was going to happen. But, I mean, David Cameron quite clearly has painted himself into a corner here because, you know, he is effectively coming out with the last chance saloon argument. Well, you know, I wish I had shares in the last chance saloon. <laughs> and so you, you have to look at what you want to regulate and you have to bite the bullet because self-regulation is clearly not going to work. But I don't think that Levison's brief, I know this is an awful thing to throw in at this time, but the brief wasn't wide enough because newspapers do not operate in isolation anymore. You know, the whole phone hacking thing showed that. The whole Newsnight thing showed that. The, you know, newspapers are not an isolated platform anymore. Do you expect then, as a result of this great debate, what will actually emerge, do you reckon? Well, I mean, I, I think Leveson has probably kicked it into the long grass by default. I don't, I don't think he meant to. But, you know, the newspaper, I mean, the PCC, Lord Hunt, seems to be going away thinking he's, he's going to run this thing. The politicians are being told by Leveson that, that they're going to run this thing. I mean, quite clearly there will be some sort of panel set up. But, but that, that bothers me, that the editors are going to get in, involved in, in who sits on the panel to make it independent. So presumably they all take out the American-style editor cards from their hat bands yeah. and, and, and sit down and we all go over it again. But, you know, self-regulation is not regulation, but I think they need to be clear exactly what they want to do. That's uh, Martin Campbell, former advisor, chief advisor to uh, Ofcom. Thank you.